G'day everyone, my name's Barney and today we're going to be getting into the holiday spirit by generating snowflakes in P5JS. Now this probably doesn't make the most sense coming from an Australian because we're just going into summer and it's bloody hot outside, but hopefully this little project can help cool me down. So I'm just going to try and show you how I'm going to approach this in paint using my amazing mouse drawing skills. If you think back to how you might have done this as a kid with some paper and scissors, you fold the piece of paper up and then you just cut one edge of the snowflake and that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this horizontal right segment here and we'll just generate points above the line. And then we can connect them up. And this is actually going to be all we have to do for the entire snowflake. So once we've generated these points, we can reflect them over the X axis and this will give us the same points below the line, something like that. And of course, we'll be creating a list of these points. So these points will actually be connected as well. And now we've got the points for one of our segments. So what we can do now is take these points and then redistribute them all around the different segments of our circle. Now you can see I have not done the best job of lining these all up, but thankfully the code will take care of that for us. And you can see we're left with a shape that looks quite like a snowflake. And of course, these points are gonna be completely randomly generated. So each time we run the code, we're gonna get a completely new snowflake. So that's the process, now let's do it in code. We're using the online P5JS editor and you can see I've got a very basic sketch set up here. I've just got a setup function where I create the canvas giving it my width and height and I've also got a draw function with the background being set to a nice dark gray. So there are three steps to this process. First, we've got to generate the points along one of our segments. And then secondly, we've got to reflect those points so we get a full segment. And then lastly, we need to take that segment and copy it around to all the other segments. So step one is gonna be generating some points. So I'm creating a function called points for segment, which will create the points for a segment. And I'm taking in as parameters, the number of segments and the maximum radius of our snowflake. So firstly, we're going to figure out how many points we're actually going to generate in this segment. And to do that, I'm using the random function and we're generating a number between four and 10. And of course, these can be any numbers that you want. I'm just using four and 10, but please play around with this and see how it changes your snowflake. And we want the number of points to be a whole number. So I'm converting that into an integer. I'm also then creating an array that will hold all of the points for this segment, as well as calculating the angle that we're going to be generating in for this segment. And that is pi divided by the number of segments. Now, the reason we're using pi instead of two pi, which is the full 360 degrees here, is because we only want to generate in half of this segment because we're going to reflect it later and take up the full angle of that segment. For each point in our segment, we're going to choose a random angle and a random radius, and these are in polar coordinates. And then we're going to use a little bit of trigonometry to convert them into Cartesian coordinates, which is the X and Y that you're probably familiar with. And to do this, we use cos of the angle times the radius for the X and sine of the angle times the radius for the Y. And then we can use those X and Ys to create a vector and push that into our segment points array. So this was the first step of generating the points in half of the segment. So now we've got to reflect those points for the second half of the segment. And because we've been generating our points with the X axis as the line for the segment, all we have to do is actually invert the Y coordinate and it will reflect our point for us. So I've just caught myself about to loop through these points in a forwards direction, but we actually want to do it in reverse. And this is probably easiest to explain back in the paint diagram. So we're at the point now where we've generated these points in red here and we wanna reflect them across this line in order to get this second half of the segment and complete that segment into a whole shape. The reason we don't wanna loop through them forwards is because we're gonna be adding these points into the same array. So if we copied this point first, which is here, when we come to draw this, we're gonna be drawing from here to here and then along these lines here. And then the next point in the array will be this one here. So we'll get a big line across like this. But instead what we wanna do is we want to copy this point first and work backwards through these points. And so then when we come to draw them, we'll be drawing them in the correct order to get that shape fully fleshed out. And again, I'm really sorry that you've had to witness my drawing skills. So I've now fixed that issue. You can see we've got the for loop going backwards through the points that we've already generated. And all we're doing is we're grabbing that point at that index and then creating a new point with it and inverting the Y axis, which is putting it below the X axis, reflecting that point and completing our segment. 
And then lastly, we're just returning the complete list of segment points. So now that we've got a few points, why don't we try and display them on the screen so we can see how we're going. So to do this, I've just created a function called draw points and you can see it takes in a list of points as well as an X and a Y location to draw them in. Because if you recall, we're generating these points around the zero zero point, the origin. So we can now shift it to any X, Y offset that we like. P5 makes it super simple for us to draw our own custom shape. You can see we just have to encapsulate our code with these begin shape and end shape calls. And then we simply loop through all of our points and create a vertex at our position. And you can see here I'm offsetting the X and Y coordinates by the X and Y coordinates we've passed into our function. And lastly, with our end shape call, you can see I'm passing in the close keyword. And this just means that the last point will get connected up to the first point that we drew. So now we can use the draw points function inside our draw function. And you can see here, I'm just setting the fill to 255 and turning off the stroke. And then I'm passing in an array of points as well as the center of the screen for our draw offset into the draw points function. The points that we're passing in, I've declared at the top of the file. And you can see inside the setup function, I'm now using the points for segment function that we've just written to generate those points. And they'll be passed into the draw points array and displayed on the screen. And when we run this, you can see we get some random points generated in a segment around the center of the screen. And this is of course, just one of the segments out of six. So the next part is gonna be getting this segment and copying it around to the six other segments. To do this, I'm creating a function called snowflake from segment, and it takes in a number of segments as well as the points for a segment. First, I've got an array that's gonna hold all of the points we're generating for our snowflake. I'm then looping over the number of segments we've got. And then for each segment, I'm figuring out what the angle of that segment is. And I'm doing that by multiplying the index in this for loop by two pi divided by the number of segments. Then what we wanna do is for each segment, we wanna loop over all of the points we've generated for a segment. And then we get that point and figure out the angle and the radius of each of those points. And then we're going to add on the angle for the segment that we want. And this is going to shift all of the points around in our circle for each segment. And then we can use the angle and radius that we've calculated just like we did before into an X and a Y coordinate. And then these can be pushed into our points array after being turned into a vector. And then lastly, we can return our array of points from the function. So at the moment, we've got to call the points for segment function and then pass the result of that into the snowflake from segment function. But I think it would be better if we wrap that all in a generate snowflake function. So this is a very simple function. You can see I've got generate snowflake and it takes in a number of segments and a radius. And then firstly, we call the points for segment function passing in the segments and the radius and storing that in segment points. And that gets passed into the snowflake from segments function along with the number of segments as well. And then this is returned from our generate snowflake function. So now what we can do in the setup function is instead of calling the points for segment function, we can just directly call our generate snowflake. And the arguments we pass into this are the exact same as what we had before. So I've just got a little typo here. You can see I'm trying to add ang here, but that doesn't exist. And that's because I misnamed this one here. This should be angle like that. And then this should work. <laughs> And you can see that running this, we get a six sided snowflake generated with random points. But now this is just a static snowflake and this is all we get. So what we're gonna do now is just make it, when we click the mouse, we'll generate a completely new snowflake and we can cycle through the infinite possibilities of snowflakes. Again, P5.js makes this really simple for us. If we create a function called mouse released, every time we release the mouse button, this function will get called. So when we run this, you can see we get a snowflake just like we did before. And every time we click the mouse, we get an entirely new snowflake that is randomly generated. And you can see it creates some pretty cool looking results. And of course, this is only for six sided ones because we're always passing in six as the number of segments, but you can pass in whatever number you want and maybe even do some fancy calculations to how you figure out how many segments you want. So there's one last thing I want to do before we finish. I've just noticed that there's a bit of an inefficiency in how we're going about this. So in the points for segment function, we're creating an angle and a radius, and then we're converting that into an X and Y location. But then in the snowflake from segments function, we're then taking those points in X and Y and converting them back into an angle and a radius before converting them back again into an X and Y. And this is a bit unnecessary. So we're going to fix that up. 
So the first thing we've got to do is get rid of the conversion in the points for segment function. So we're going to just keep our values in an angle and a radius. And you can see I'm just passing them directly into the create vector function. So the A or the angle is taking the position of the X variable and the radius is taking the position of the Y. Thankfully, this change makes it no harder to reflect our points. But instead of inverting the point dot Y, we now need to invert the point dot X. And this is because the value that we're inverting is the angle now. So the zero angle is pointing straight out to the right and to reflect along that, we need to swap the angle from going above that line to be going below that line. So turning the point dot X into a negative will invert our angle for us and reflect the point. Then in our snowflake from segment function, all we have to do is actually just get rid of code pretty much. So we can get rid of the part where we're converting the X and Y coordinate of the point back into an angle and radius. And instead, when we're calculating the X and Y now, we can just use the point dot X in place of the angle and the point dot Y in place of the radius. And of course, don't forget to add in the angle of the segment into this calculation. So we need to add the angle that we calculated up here, which is the angle of each of the segments. And this then creates our full snowflake with all of the segments there. So there we go, we've got our final effect of creating a snowflake in P5.js just in time for the holiday season. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you have, it would be great if you could give the video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you have a wonderful holiday period and I'll see you in the new year. If you don't want to wait that long but you want to keep randomly generating stuff, then I highly suggest you check out this video here where we generate plants using L systems. I'll see you next time.